and welcome to High School Physics Explained. And this is the next video in this series, How Well Do You Know? And today I'm going to talk to you about how well do you know transformers? As always with these questions, and they're all multiple choice questions, I encourage you to have a look at the question, pause the video and attempt the question before proceeding and listening to the answer explained to you. So let's start. So the first question says a transformer which has 60 turns into a primary coil is used to convert an input of 3 volts into the output of 12 volts. Which description best fits this transformer? Now that you've had a chance to actually try the answer, let's have a quick look in terms of the physics involved. So we know that there are 60 turns and we know that we are having an input of 3 volts and an output of 12 volts. Now, since we've gone from 3 volts to 12 volts, then what that tells you straight away that is this is a step up transformer. And that's what step up transformers do. They increase the voltage. So that automatically means these are our two responses here. Now, it says it has 60 turns in the primary coil. Now, the ratio of the primary voltage over the secondary voltage is the same ratio of the number of turns from primary to secondary. So if we go in that order, if we go from 12 over 3, so now what we've done here is, is actually I've gone from secondary to primary over here, the ratios are exactly the same. So in that case, what we will have is, is we have our unknown of our secondary, which we don't know, and we have 60 turns over here. When you have a step up transformer, the number of turns in your secondary uh, coil will increase. Now only two values have larger than 60 and of course that means C is our answer. Now let's have a look at our second question. A transformer has a primary coil with 60 turns and a secondary coil with 2300 turns. If the primary voltage to the transformer is 110 volts, what is the secondary voltage? I hope you've tried the question. Now again, as I told you before, that the ratio of the turns from primary to secondary or secondary primary is the same as the voltage. And so if we go the voltage of the secondary divided by the voltage of the primary, and I said that is equal to the number of turn ratios as well, then if we substitute everything in, then we're able to determine the voltage of the secondary part of the transformer. So we know that the primary has 60. So we have 60 down the bottom over here and the secondary is 2300. Now that equals the ratio in terms of the voltages. Now we know that the primary coil has a voltage of 110 and we don't know the voltage over here. So as you can see the voltage is simply equal to 2300 multiplied by 110 over 60 and that gives us an answer of 4216.7 volts. Looking at our answer there, the best answer to two significant figures is D. Next question. A neon sign requires 6000 volts supply for its operation and a transformer allows the neon sign to operate from a 240 volt supply. What is the ratio of the number of secondary turns to the number of primary turns for the transformer? Well, we should, this is pretty easy. As you can, as I told you before, the ratio is the same for the voltages as it is for the turns. So we've got 6,000 is needed and the supply is 240. So what is needed is our secondary and that's the first number that we want. And so the ratio is going to be 6,000 over 240. And of course the answer to that is 25. And therefore the ratio of the secondary to the primary is 25 is to one. The answer is C. Next question. A primary coil of a transformer is connected to a battery, a resistor and a switch. The secondary coil is connected to a galvanometer. Which of the following graphs best show the current flow in the galvanometer when the switch is closed? Now what is important to understand is, is that a transformer for it to work requires a change of flux. Now that is the secondary coil must experience a 
regular change of flux due to the development of the magnetic field in the primary coil. So in this case, we have a DC supply. And so when the current goes on, because we have a DC supply, we're going to get a stable magnetic field overall. But of course, initially it starts at zero. So we're going to have a rapid increase of a magnetic field, which then stabilizes out. Now in the secondary coil, of course, that increasing magnetic field will cause a change in flux and will register a current for a short duration. But once this current is steady, once we have a steady magnetic field, we won't have a changing flux over here, which means that the actual galvanometer will not read anything because the current stops. The current is determined by the EMF and the EMF is all about the change of flux over time. So therefore, A is incorrect because you do generate a small current. B is also incorrect because you do get a current, but this suggests that we have a constant current occurring and that's not possible. This is incorrect as well because there is no alternating supply. And so the correct answer is C. And explaining again, as I told you, we has the current starts to flow. We're going to get a changing flux and therefore a EMF and therefore a current. But then as soon as it stabilizes in terms of the current, we're going to have no change in flux and a rapid descent to no current. So therefore the answer is C. A transformer is to be designed so that it is efficient with heating by eddy currents minimized. The designer has some iron and insulating material available to build the transformer core and the windings are to be made with insulated copper wire. Which of the following designs minimizes the energy losses in the core? Okay, so let's explore this a little bit closer. What we're going to get, of course, is, is that as there is a current flowing through the wire, and of course this current is going to be alternating, or at least produces a, a regular change because that's what a transformer needs to have, then this iron that is in all situations here will experience that changing flux as well. And that is going to produce eddy currents. And eddy currents are small circular currents that are a result of the changing flux. And these eddy currents will produce in the same direction or the same plane. So in other words, these eddy currents are going to go in circles like this. Now, the fact is, is that these eddy currents will actually utilize power. They will heat it up. You will lose energy from the secondary coil of your transformer simply because some energy is lost due to heating up of the iron core. And so what we need to do is somehow disrupt these eddy currents. Now clearly there's no disruption whatsoever here because the eddy currents are free to move in the iron core. So this does not give you the best in the, uh, minimizing the energy loss. Now in this one over here, you can see this is in the same plane. So we're still going to get these circular eddy currents over here. And so as a result, this is not going to be helpful as well. Here we've got some iron rods over here, but these iron rods, although they may minimize a little bit, you're not going to really get your strengthening of your magnetic field, which is what you need. And so therefore, um, therefore that's the incorrect answer. So these laminations over here do the job. They actually will give you your uh, interruption of the eddy current, um, but still allow some strengthening of the magnetic field lines that run through these particular, this core. So the answer is B. The diagram shows a model of a transformer in a circuit. Which of the following correctly identifies part one and part two and the function of the transformer? Okay, now all transformers basically have a source and they have a load applied to them. So the source here is the alternating voltage. So there's your source. So that means this is my primary end. Here is the load. And of course, you know, it's a load because I don't have a voltage a supply attached to it. And so 
of course, this will generate potential difference because of the transformer. Therefore, that will create a current. And of course, that current will flow through the resistor, which is what you want. So this is my secondary. Now, the other thing to notice is, is that we have a number of turns here and the number of turns here increases, goes from a small number to a large number. Now, as I said before, increasing the number of turns increases the voltage and therefore we call this a step up transformer. So looking at all your responses, part one clearly is our secondary coil. Part two is clearly our primary coil. Our situation here is definitely our step up transformer, and therefore the answer is D. Which of the following ideal transformers could be used to convert an input voltage of 20 volts AC to an output of 2 volts AC? Okay, this is an ideal transformer. So an ideal transformer says that the power in equals the power out. So we're assuming there is no energy loss in terms of any eddy currents made that may be formed in the iron core. But the important thing here is, is we've gone from 20 volts to two volts. So our secondary to primary of our voltage is equal to two over 20. Now that is got to be the same ratio of our number of turns of secondary to primary. And so we're looking for a one to 10 ratio of our secondary to primary. So we need a 10 to 1 ra ratio. Now it doesn't have to be one way or the other. So this could be our secondary and this could be our primary. So we need to have a 1 in 10 relationship. Now this is clearly not, 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 but this is. So this is going to be our transformer that we need to give us our 1 to 10 relationship. However, of course, this will have to be connected to our 20 volts. AC and the other end will produce, therefore, our two volts on the other side. This is our primary, this is our secondary. So answer D. The apparatus shown here is designed to investigate the operation of a transformer. A student closes the switch for a short time and then opens it. The data logger records values of voltages for both coils for the duration of the investigation. The data logger software displays the result as a pair of voltage time graphs on a computer monitor. So which of these graphs, sets of graphs here, best depicts the student's results? I'll give you a moment. So let's have a look at the response. Well, first of all, you have to understand that this is a DC voltage that is applied here. So the voltage is going to be on for a short time and then main off, and then in between you're going to get a constant voltage. So you're going to expect a rapid increase in voltage as it turns on. You're going to have it fairly steady and then of course it's turned off and it'll drop down significantly like this. And that's going to, that's fairly standard. This, shouldn't, this is not particularly hard to understand. However, what happens here in this particular coil over here? Now, first of all, we clearly have a step up transformer. We'd go from 100 turns to 200 turns. So that whatever, if we do get a EMF generated, it's going to be a larger EMF than, for example, that we might have at this level right here. But there are a couple of things to understand. First of all, any EMF that is generated will be in the opposite direction. That is consistent with Linz's law. So you're not going to get a spike that is in the positive direction. But the second thing to understand is, is that you're going to get no EMF while the actual current remains constant. It's going to drop quickly to zero because an EMF is only generated when there is a change in flux. And as far as we're concerned from here to there, there is no change in flux. So initially turned on, you're going to get the opposite effect. When it's turned off, because this is in a negative direction, a negative slope here, the change of flux, we're going to get a spike in the opposite direction. So if we were to graph that, you'd get here a positive slope. So therefore we're going to get a downward direction until it drops to zero. Then it's going to remain to zero. And then when it gets to this point, we're going to get a rapid increase because we've got a rapid change of flux as this drops to zero. But of course, it'll be a larger increase and it's going to drop to zero again once it actually sets to zero here. So looking at all the responses, 
And you can clearly see A is the only possible answers. And let's double check that. We have obviously a rapid increase and this peak is in the opposite direction and also is larger than the value here. When this drops off to zero, when it's switched off, we're getting a negative change of flux that relates to a positive uh, EMF on this side because of the EMF is equal to negative change of flux over T. And there's your lenses law. Uh, therefore, and that is consistent there as well. So A is the only possible answer. And now for our last question, and probably the most difficult of this series. The diagram shows an ideal transformer. When the switch is closed, the pointer on the galvanometer deflects. How could, you, how could the size of the deflection be increased? Now again, to understand this question, you need to understand what is happening here in terms of power because that's going to be the key to help you understand what's going on here. So we know, first of all, that if we, we clearly have the number of turns going down, so what we have here is a step-down transformer. Now, the step-down transformer means you get a voltage drop, but because power is remaining constant, because it's an ideal transformer, so power in equals power out, then as a result, if you compare the currents, then the current in the secondary coil will actually be higher than the current in the primary coil. Now, how can you therefore increase the current, which is what's required because you want the deflection to increase in this coil? But you need to understand too that this is a load situation. So if you want to increase the current in the galvanometer, you therefore also need to increase the voltage in the secondary coil. So if we want an increase in the current that is in the secondary coil, that means we need an increase in the voltage in the secondary coil. Now, how do we increase the voltage here? Now, the thing is, this voltage here is set. And so the amount that this drops is determined by the ratios here. So for let's say, for example, the ratio is 5 to 1. So if we have a 5 is to 1 ratio in the number of turns, then whatever voltage we get here is going to be dropped by a value of 5 to 1. If we want an increase in the voltage, therefore, then we want to reduce this ratio. We can't change this voltage here. So we want to reduce this ratio. So the way that we can reduce the ratio is one of two ways. We can either decrease the number of turns in the primary coil, or we can increase the number of turns in the secondary coil. So those are our two options. Decreasing this ratio, so let's say go to 3 to 1, for example, um, then that's our only two options. Decrease the number of turns here or increase the number of turns here. By decreasing the number of secondary co uh, coils, that actually increases this ratio and therefore we have a drop in voltage and we have a drop in secondary current and that's not what we want. So that is incorrect. If we replace the iron core with a copper core, that only basically changes maybe the uh, heating aspect. Now this is an ideal transformer, so that's not gonna make no difference whatsoever. Placing a resistor in the galvanometer, well, if you place a resistor here, that's going to ultimately reduce the current. So that's not gonna be the answer. Now the only possible answer A is A. By decreasing the number in the primary coil, as I've done here, for example, then that means the ratio is not as big. And as a result, you're going to get an increase in voltage of your secondary coil compared to your uh, input voltage over here. And as a result, you're going to get an increase in current and therefore an increase in the galvanometer. So A is the answer. Well, I hope that has helped you understand transformers a little bit better. Please press the like button if this has helped you. Share with your friends. And if you want more of my videos, press subscribe. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.